What up, everybody, and welcome back to the Nerd Generation. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We are going to be talking about episode number five of Hawkeye. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are sleeping on this show because you're tired of Marvel and it's just not as good or whatever negative thoughts or emotions you be, you're having towards anything Marvel as of late. The tides have turned. You need to watch Hawkeye. It is a fantastic show, although it started off a little slow, but uh, it certainly got better after episode three. And this one did not disappoint. Brian, what's up? How are you doing? Good. Well, apologies for people. Be, we've been off for a little bit because I've been relocating and traveling for work, so I haven't been able to uh, sit down and tape. But I did have time to stay on top of this show, and I 100% agree with you. This has been the biggest surprise, I think, of the Marvel year. Um, yeah. That, that they not only reinvigorated this character, but actually they built some amazing new characters and things around this show to where, you know, this is the one where you you we have one episode to go. And I'm like, can we have another six like right now? I, I don't know how they're going to resolve any, I mean, most of what they have here, but I'm, I'm, I'm very ready for season two if they want to greenlight it. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Um, to me, this episode was so well done. And I have been thinking about doing this previously, but I just, you know, I don't have the time to really dissect and really think about these episodes and what some of these scenes mean. Um, Cause I just don't have the time, but I felt for this one, I had to do it. Um, so I just wrote down each scene and what I thought about each scene and what may occur in the next and final episode. So Brian, Scene one, we go back to 2018. Yelena and another Black Widow uh, are going around the world doing what they said they were going to do and just free the, the Black Widows that were still under um, the mind control. And so they go to this one um, specifically. Do you remember her name? No. Anna? Anna. Yeah, you're right. Tall, yeah, tall blonde. That's yes, the, yeah. yes. And so they spray her and they realize that she's not under the control, which is interesting. Which is very interesting. Yep. Um, what do you think of that moment before we head into the fantastic surprise of what occurred um, in the next scene? Tell me. Well, I thought the... the Marvel continues to find ways to sort of relive the snap or relive their greatest hits from yeah. different perspectives. Yeah. And I thought in this one, it was that idea of seeing Elena in the bathroom getting blipped. So it confirmed she was blipped, right? That's the other thing. I mean, she, she, we wondered after the Black Widow movie, was she blipped or not? So she was. Mm -hmm. But then it shows her instantaneously rematerializing in the same bathroom, but five years later, right? So she then she comes out and, the, and she practices a family party. Yes. That's totally changed. And, and the other Black Widow is gone. And, and then obviously we, we know that she then subsequently finds out about the doctor being dead. All that stuff gets filled in. But I don't know what you thought, but I thought it was very cool just to see the effect of oh, her yeah. being blipped and then brought back. But in her mind, literally no time had passed. But yeah. the only person we had really experienced that with, or at least been told about specifically, was Scott Lang. But he was in the quantum realm, right? So they, yes. he described to us like, "Hey, no time has passed." But mm. we never saw like the world around him kind of changing because he was in the quantum realm. So if he yeah. was the first chance we really had to kind of totally see. We've seen disappearance. We've seen the snap before. We've seen and the, the, and we've the, never and seen the, it happen the, together. Yes, 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 yes. And that was it. Yes. Yes, they did a good job of showing what what they went through because we saw the reappearance in Monica Rambeau. Yep. Right, but we don't know the time frame between the initial snap and her reemergence. And this one, they actually showed what it felt like, I guess, for them. Yeah. And you can imagine 
her confusion as to what the hell is going on. And then I'm, I'm sure she told um, the story. Well, actually, um, what's this girl's name? Dreyfus told her. Oh, well, did she already knew that, that she passed away? Yeah, she obviously went to the grave. But, but the grave is five or six years later, right? That's, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So I guess, okay. So she's told that Yelena's dead at some point. And Dreyfus points her to the person responsible. So now we fast forward. We're going to the scene one. The real scene. Hawkeye. Hawkeye scene one. Okay, Bishop arrives. Mother fixes her up. And I think this was a moment where I think it's going to come back. I agree. Um, because she had this sort of moment of perhaps feeling some of the same feelings that she has for her father and, 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 and as we'll see later for Hawkeye that she can trust her, right? Because she's there for her, taking care of her. So she felt like she can trust her and tell her the information that she said to her and you can already, you, everybody knows that she's up to no good. Obviously, obviously. Um, do you think we get that conversation back sort of in terms of how she felt and, and, and certain things that she says to her is going to come back later in um, episode number six. Yeah. Well, I think we'll talk about it in a later scene, but then I think we really get the first reveal to eight that her mom is actually the, uh, the villain and not Jack. But mm -hmm. clearly I also think what the scene is setting up is the classic, you know, not the comic book trope, the movie trope of, the parent who genuinely loves their child. Yeah. But then goes to all sorts of criminal or nefarious lengths in the name of protecting what they have mm -hmm. or making a better life for their kid. And, and you can see it, right? So I think there is like genuine caring there, but mm -hmm. you know, Kate's obviously gonna feel the betrayal of realizing that her mom is not who she says she is. Yeah. Uh, later on. And so that scene is is sort of a, a necessary scene. And I think, you know, as I said, we'll talk about the season two or whatever is going to happen with this show. But, you know, I mean, Vera Farmiga has not had a lot to do. Yeah. The show and like she's not there to drop in for 30 seconds at a time. Right? We know she's got to do something, whether it's in this season or in a future something. Yeah. Uh, so we start to see maybe like a little bit of the building blocks of, of that. In yeah. This so. Scene two. Are we done with that scene? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I think we can move on from there. Scene two, um, and I originally had seen one as the actual conversation we had regarding the, the 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 backstory of Yelena, but I had one question. Before we move on, I had one question. Do you think we're going to continue seeing um, the blip as sort of the beginning uh, to other characters and, and how they sort of react to this? this um event and moving forward with whatever they do in uh um uh in the mcu i mean because I, I, I would assume that obviously this happened all around the universe right yeah. so there are other beings that witnessed it and and were actually snapped as well do you think we're gonna continue to see that i do uh i think when you look at the tv shows you look at you know it's referenced more subtly in Shang Chi, um, but I, I, I think it, I think it seems clear that they're going to spend a good amount of phase four using that the fallout of that blipped or not blipped. What happened in those five years? Is gonna, Eternals obviously dealt with this. They they keep bringing this back. Yeah. My guess is the multiverse will replace the blip as we go forward. So the implications yeah. of multiversal fallout the loose ends that don't get tied up, that's going to supplant the blip as we exit phase four into phase five. But along the way, I think we're going to keep keep seeing this. As long as Marvel can come up with new ways to use it yeah. to forward a narrative, I think you're going to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this is a recap. So scene one, just to get everybody on the same page, scene one is um, the backstory of Yelena and what happened in 2018 when she got snapped. And there were some questions there. Number two and two A is Kate Bishop arriving at home and having this sort of heart to heart with her mom. 
Um, and then things suddenly switching. So scene three. Maya and Kaz. So Kaz is patching her up. Um, I'm not going to get into the full details, but in this scene, you can clearly see that Kaz is being, uh, is caring a little bit too much about um, what Maya wants and wants this to end. And you can see the worry in his in this conversation to us. I, I At least I noticed it. I noticed it. You know what I noticed it? Let me be honest. I noticed it. After the second meeting. And I was like, okay, now I understand that situation with Kaz. Because in the beginning, you think Kaz is, you know, just being that, I guess, brother yeah, to, yeah. to Maya, right? And at the end, and, and now we finally see that there's an ulterior motive as to why he's acting this way. Because in the beginning, he was like, you know, forget about this. And now he wants to get it done. So tell me about that scene and what you thought. Well, I think it also gives, so this episode gives context to the prior episode because remember the prior episode, we see Hawkeye materialize in the backseat of the car that Kaz is driving. Right? He, threat, he basically threatens. Yeah. Which you, and at the time you're like, oh, cool, classic hero thing, but you don't have the context. Why is he in that guy's car? Yeah. And this is the episode that basically tells you why he's in that guy's car. Got it. Because Hawkeye, from the history, knows that's the link to the, what we'll talk about in the end scene, right? But that, so that's where it all makes sense. You're like, oh, okay. So mm -hmm. Hawkeye had history with cats. He knew who that guy was, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he went to him to say, you got to tie this off or else I'm coming, coming after all of you. Mm -hmm. So then we see... Has trying to kind of lie his way through getting Maya to, to back down in this scene. Yeah. Um, and then, but Kaz still wants, you know, he's, he's not a good guy. So he's still like, I'll help you get Clint Martin. I'll help you do that because mm -hmm. he's, and he wants to do that. Why? To save his own skin, right? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. Like he, he wants to tie off Hawkeye because he doesn't want Hawkeye outing him any further. So he's like, yeah, we'll get him and then we'll call him. And he knows that there's going to be ramification if anything comes to this guy, to the big right. guy. The yeah. big guy's going to deal with it. So uh, we'll talk about the big guy in a few. Um, scene four. For me, the highlight of this uh, this um, scene was the conversation, right? Um, oh, this is the best part of the episode. Yeah. Yelena is, yo, she is hilarious, yo. She is hilarious. And I think when they're having this conversation, although she's being interrogated, no doubt. But I think she's actually being herself, sort of. Yeah. You know, her fun self. Because we saw this um, behavior with Natasha. So we know her to be fun and funny and 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 and, and cool or whatever. Um, I like how super confident she is about her skills. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she is super confident. Um... What did you think about that scene? And I guess I guess that's my question for now. What 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 did you think about that particular scene and how they interacted until we ultimately got the reason for Yelena's visit? So this is one of the best scenes Marvel's put together this year. Uh, on so many levels. First off, what Florence Pugh does to me, at least, is is approaching genius level because when Kate comes in the apartment, senses her there, and throws the money, mm -hmm. everything about the buildup is drama, right? Classic. Okay, the hero's in distress. There's a bad guy in the shadows, or girl in this case, mm -hmm. and they're gonna fight, right? Something's gonna happen, and she catches the bottle and goes, "Hi," mm -hmm. and like it just totally changes everything and yeah. that one word and the way she says it it's it just like it's a complete twist yeah, but yeah. it's delivered so like effortlessly that you're just like laughing you're like oh yeah this this she's back and because in the fight she doesn't really 
say much, right? She no. just fights on the rooftop. Yeah. You don't really get to see the personality, Maybe. which is interesting because we saw her personality in 2018 in Black Widow. Mm -hmm. We really didn't see her personality six years later, other than at the grave site where she doesn't really say much. Yeah. So this is the first time we really kind of see and hear her as she is today. And we realize, oh, her sort of wisecracking sense of humor, she hasn't lost that. Uh, to your point, she clearly has gained confidence. She oh, clearly yeah. has gained, like, she thinks she and knows she's, you know, the thing. Like, and so <laughs> I think in a way that Natasha never really represented that. Like, Natasha clearly was a great fighter, but never really, like, told it, like, yeah, trash yeah, talk yeah, everyone, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and so that, that's a whole different, like, element. Um, but then I think the other thing that's key to this scene is we know from the comics, like, these two have to get along. Like these mm -hmm. two characters have a lot of relationship and history and sort of if they're going to move forward with the Young Avengers or whatever is going to happen, like Haley Steinfeld and Florence Pugh have to work and they mm -hmm. work really well. Oh, yeah. And they work in part because Florence Pugh takes the scene as like, I'm going to be the comic. I'm going to be like the energy. And Haley Steinfeld, who has been the wisecracking character the whole series, flips oh, into yeah. like... She's scared. What the heck is going on? He, like she is the straight person, yeah, and yeah, she yeah. becomes the serious act, and it works perfectly. And it, I got to the end of the scene. I said, "You know what? I told you this before. Like I have so many like things about Black Widow, the movie, that I wish were different." And I was like, "I know we got hints of this scene in the in the car when they're driving together, but it made me wish that this was the way they had met in the movie." So in the movie, right, the brother Johansson goes to the apartment, Florence Pugh says, I know you're out there, and they have this brawl, basically, yeah. which shows off that they're good fighters. Mm -hmm. But in a weird way, when I, when I saw this scene, I was like, you know what? We know they're good fighters, because they're both Black Widows. What I'd be more interested to see is the dynamic of two long-lost sisters who haven't spoken in years, and I almost wish it had just been the two of them at the table talking the whole time, which is what this scene was. Because yeah. this... This scene could easily have been three minutes, of the two of them fighting around the apartment. And it would have been fun, but we would have been like, all right, we know they're going to ultimately be on the same side and Kate's not going to die. So how does it... it was better to have them skip that and just sit down and talk and develop some chemistry because it was great. I mean, the content was like, I don't know how they write Elena, but she's, like, she's so socially awkward, right? Because she hasn't really been in the world. So she's got a sense of humor, but she is not really right in terms of when she laughs like when she jokes like the whole thing about rudolph was absolutely <laughs> that was bonkers the hot sauce she, thing she, was funny the hot uh, sauce. Yeah, when she's like superpower reindeer then she's like have you eaten reindeer i'm like this is <laughs> the weirdest thing but it works so no the, the scene is great you see the chemistry between the two and then as you said you get to sort of the, the punchline, which is you know i'm here to kill clint and then there's a, a flip to a very serious discussion which kind of doesn't make sense because you're like, we know Clint's good and we know Yelena has been tricked, but she's mm -hmm. acting like she knows him really well. And it's Kate who doesn't. Well, it all depends on what, what's what been told to her, right? Because, no, who, honestly, who would know outside of the Avengers what happened? And who knows what Clint told him? That's what, he's the only one who knows. That's what yeah. I'm saying. He's the only one and who really knows. that's going to come back in episode six and we'll get to that. We're going to get to that. Um. So we're talking about this scene between Yelena and B Kate Bishop, but in between that scene, there's a small scene where Hawkeye goes up to Grills's crib, and and that's also setting us up for a, a devastating blow to to fans. Uh, you think, you think they're going to do it? You think they're going to do I it? I think so. I like, think so. Oh, they're setting it up. They're setting brutal. it up. So. In that scene with Yelena and uh, Kate Bishop, whom she repeatedly says her name, that was funny when, when they, she used to call her Kate Bishop. <laughs> Watch people start doing that now, calling everybody by their first and last names. Like, oh, come on, guys, come on. Um, I liked what you said regarding them arguing about sort of the good and the bad side of whom they know Clint Barton to be. And this is setting up for me a theme throughout this show. And we'll revisit that um, 
in another scene where we get yet another conversation, which I guess we're sort of looking forward to each time when Clint Barton calls his wife. Yep. See what they're gonna see that dynamic and what they're gonna say to each other. Damn, there's just so many things to get out of that scene because we all know that Yelena is not gonna kill Clint Barton. I don't think so. And I'm wondering, Brian. Let me ask you this: Do you think there's gonna be? I, I think so because. She she told Kate Bishop, there's no escaping this. She's been hired to be contracted and her job is to get the job done. Because yeah, remember, she doesn't But remember, see, I think the theme that will come around is when Kate goes to Clint's apartment at mm -hmm. Christmas, or to give him a Christmas celebration a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he spent and, and he basically for the first time in the entire MCU basically gives you what's going on inside. And he says, and she asked him, what's the best shot you took? And he says, the, the best I shot take. I took is the one I didn't take. And he says it in relation to Natasha, obviously. But then we see it replay itself very visually in the fourth episode where Kate, who knows if she would have been able to hit Florence Pugh with the yeah, arrow, but she yeah, hesitates yeah, yeah, and doesn't yeah. take that shot and Florence yeah. Pugh gets away. And I think you're clearly heading toward a scene where Florence Pugh probably will have a shot at Clint Barton and won't take it. And so I think you're going to continue to see that in the world of the heroes where there's confusion and sometimes they're on the, the opposite sides. It is the shot they don't take that usually has sort of the greatest consequences or the greatest benefits. And so that's yeah. what I think. I don't know if it'll be multiple ways, but I feel yeah. like that line can be applicable to a lot of things in the finale. Do they take the shot at Vera Farmiga, for example, if they find out she's the bad guy? Yeah, they would take the shot at King, uh, you know, the big guy if they have a shot at him. But, <laughs> um, but I think you're going to see that in a couple of ways. What does Echo do? Echo is clearly on this mission of vengeance, right? And so, is she going to take the shot that she's probably going to have at some point? King Pin, yeah. So again, you see this with all the main characters. Yeah. Um, let's fast track a little bit because we're, we're sort of hitting a lot of points where I, where I think this is going to lead towards, and I've done well with predicting certain scenes in, in, in episodes. So I'm going to say this. We are going to get a, a performance from Jeremy Renner retelling that story and what he went through to te to sort of get uh, Yelena to back off. Right? Yelena might not take that shot after she hears what he has to say. And it's going to be a grueling experience for him to relive that. Because right now in his mind, he sees... You know, you see the post-traumatic stuff. You see these little instances of that event. Right now, he's going to be forced to sort of tell the whole story. Right? Because, A, he doesn't want not to be there for his kids. I don't necessarily think he's going to be begging for his life. But he's certainly going to tell Yelena what happened. And that's going to be a grueling conversation. And it is going to be the highlights of that episode. You, What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I am with you. I am interested to see how he's going to be able to convince her of something that happened on another planet with no witnesses other than the Red Skull, unless that Red Skull is <laughs> going to show up and back him up, which I doubt. So I am fascinated to see what parrot of information. So we know she's been lied to. Yes. So he clearly has to have something in his narrative that she would pick up on as inconsistent with what she's been told and somehow would have to know that she's been lied to and that he's telling the truth. And it's fascinating to see what that's going to be. It's going to be similar to how Yelena asked Kate Bishop, where is he? She accepted her, I don't know. It's going to be something in her that she was trained to understand whether a person is lying or not. And hearing that, story from Clint in the way he is going to perform that dialogue is going to be convincing to all of us because we know the story but we don't really know how he's going to detail how he felt and what went on in his mind how he experienced it a way that we've never experienced we saw it but we see it as a moment you know he struggles with look what happened um when he lost his family what did he say to himself? Like, he lost everybody. He didn't even, he lost everybody. You would think at least one or two would go away. He lost everybody. 
And so to him, there's people out here calling, you know, doing criminal stuff and killing, you know, I'm going after all of them because they weren't supposed to be sacrificed. He shouldn't have lost him, them, his family. And so I guess you understand why Ronan came to be. He's like, yo, these, these, these dudes aren't living. So that's what I think we're going to see from him in his explanation as to what happened, how he, and, and the emotion that he's going to evoke in that conversation. Yelena's, is, she's not going to do it. She's just not going to do it. I think this is scene seven, Hawkeye um, is at Grills, and that, that, that scene was just used to um, sort of introduce the new suits that um, that police girl um, created for them. So that was just to, to, to do that. Um, then scene eight, we got Jack Duca Duquesne yep. um, being arrested. I don't know about you, Brian. To me, that looks staged. What are your thoughts? 100%. The question is, I don't, I wasn't totally clear how much he was in on the joke. Mm -hmm. um, I actually tend to think he wasn't. I think, as I said, this whole thing with Jack has been pointing at him, but we kind of knew Vera Farmiga was behind it. The arrest is clearly like some kind of fake arrest using her security company. Or Jack might think it's real, but then like it's just her having her henchmen kind of take care of it. So yeah, it's totally not. It's for Kate's Ben. It's for Kate's believability it's not yes, for yes 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 and scene nine we get um hawkeye visiting the site where they first the avengers first we got that first shot of them going around where they were fighting in um the first avengers i like that he takes off his hearing aid that signified to me you know we are with someone with when we're alone there's no distractions and for him to take it off so that he can find that moment just to be in that moment and and having a conversation with um, Natasha what, what were your thoughts on the, on that scene yeah no I think it's I think it speaks to their connection the fact that he the way he upholds it and maintains it you know it's sort of but it's almost daily prayer or that's who he speaks to like in his conscience. Uh, I think it is sort of a, you know, a uh, one of those pivotal moments where the hero kind of steals himself to go do what he wants to do, which is what he's, you know, he's kind of going there for permission. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what he's, 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 he's like, I'm about, I'm about to go do some bad stuff, but, you know, in the name of good, and, and I hope you forgive me for it. So, yeah, it's almost like confessional, right? That's like his little version of it. So, yeah. Uh, but I did notice that... Uh, those names on the plaque were not not alphabetical, and he was mm -hmm. last. Just yeah. gonna point that out. Clint Barton was on the He's bottom. Not. Yeah, wow, <laughs> oh. wow, <laughs> right? That's crazy. That's that's. I'm telling you, man. If they did that purposely, that's kudos to them. Um, scene ten, you can get get Kate Bishop in her room, and she's sort of looking at some of the stuff um, around in her in her room that reminds. And you got to make the two connections. Reminds her of her father, the pictures that she saw, and then the bow and arrow of that moment where she saw Hawkeye as saved her. She's, you can definitely say that she looks up to Hawkeye and looks at him as a father figure, so to speak, because she's been in that moment where he was a father to his kids. And um, his conversation with him reminded her of the conversation she has with her father. So definitely there's connection there. And she wants to you know, make her father proud, right? Or she, she, you know, at some point in her life, but she doesn't have a father. She has Hawkeye. And so there, there she has that, that aha moment or that turning point in that she made the decision of, you know, I'm going all the way with this. What were your thoughts on that scene? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Kate Bishop origin story is, is this like a whiff of Batman in there, right? It's that idea of like, you lose a parent and that trauma pushes you into this commitment to yeah. the life of yeah. being a hero or vigilante. Now, she's not as dark, obviously, as Bruce Wayne yeah. as a character, but it's the same idea. Like, at a young age, he has decided, I need to develop the skills and learn the ways of being an Avenger. 
Yeah. And it, it's an interesting like idea, right? There's like a lot of these heroes that we have are kind of, they stumble into the life. Uh, you know, Peter Parker gets bitten by a spider, right? It's not like he chose to be a hero. It just sort of was pushed on him by, by this accident. So she actually makes the conscious decision as Bruce Wayne does to like, I need to learn to fight. I need to learn to shoot because I want to protect my family. I want to be able to protect my family and the ones around me in a way that, you know, others the way that only heroes can and so she yeah, sees yeah, clint yeah. martin as like the manifestation of that like he is that yes. how do i get to be that yeah, but she yeah. doesn't necessarily understand everything that went into that which is why he's constantly talking to her about the shot i didn't take and all the bad stuff that he's done and everything yeah. you know what do you say was um here being a hero is ultimately a game of managing loss that's an, that's an interesting like yeah. unheroic way to frame so you kind of see yeah. that like mentor mentee yeah um, scene 11 was just a quick introduction or, or an explanation as, as, as to how Maya and Ronan are going to meet up. So that set the stage, even though it was a funny scene with the brass knuckles and everything. Um, they have served their purpose, Jacksu yeah. Mafia. They have served their purpose. And, and although they were kind of shaky in the beginning, um, they're entertaining nonetheless. Um, scene 12 is Hawkeye talking to his wife. Um... There was something that Clint said in that conversation when he refers to the big guy. And just the thought of him being involved or him getting involved. A sinking feeling. Everybody has felt that sinking feeling when they're, they're tasked to do something they don't want. Or, or be in a, in a position where they don't, they, they're scared to death of the ramification of that happening and that uns they make the yo is a thanos treatment in terms of you do not want to mess with this guy right um what were your thoughts on that scene between him and his wife well, let's talk about laura right because there's a lot of theories cropping up about laura and every time they have a conversation she makes more cryptic comments than he does quite mm -hmm. honest mm-hmm so, who do you think Laura is? I mean, some right, people so are the saying theories have been she's Mockingbird. Uh, that's one. Possibly the theory that she's actually original Ronan. That he, that she, the reason why she's aware of the suit and aware of what he's going to do is that she actually created the character and then he mm -hmm. took over the mantle. Well, because she was blipped, right? Yes. But the idea is that the the suit and the concept of it originated with her, not with him. That's interesting. So I don't know what you think, but it's clear that she's not a civilian. Yes, yes, yes. She yes. clearly has been either part of S.H.I.E.L.D., some kind of intelligence organization. And she's cool, the calm, and collected in these conversations. She knows everything. Yeah. She knows everything. This is not some like, hey, I'm hiding this from my family. Like, she knows everything that's going on with them. Yeah. So I mean, some people have said... Really, uh, like, where do you think her history really lies? I mean, so, those, those that you mentioned, are, I think, are a good possibility. Um, people have been talking about she could she, she could have been a Black Widow in the past. I don't know. But the, the ones that you mentioned are the two possibilities, I think, that are sound, sound more interesting to, the, to her story. The other thing with this conversation is it makes clear Hawkeye has very specific history with the Kingpin. And it has the feeling of they have a truce. That's what mm -hmm. it feels like to me. That they cross paths. One of them was in a position to either be killed or kill the other. And they reached some sort of understanding where he leaves the kingpin alone and the kingpin leaves his family alone. And he's mm -hmm. worried that they're not breaking that. That's what it feels like is going on. Yeah. And and finally, this, this statement that, that um, Lauren made... Um, um, before we move on, she says, I'll always understand more than anyone ever could. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff happening between um, in, in that relationship and who she is, as well as, again, Clint's story, because I'm he, you already know that he shares everything with her. Right. He shared and Yelena, you know, was part of the family, sort of. Right. So you know he spilled the beans to her. Clint also not, knows. Not Yelena, um, um, Natasha, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say Clint, but Clint knows Yelena exists. Yes, yes, cab, yes. And he we'll says know her yes, name yes, unprompted. Yes. 
So yes. he clearly knows who it is. Yes, yes, yes. So again, to have to retell that story, we're gonna. That's I can't wait for that moment. But yes, she does mention um, uh, Kate Bishop, and I love the way they did this. Kate, Kate Bishop says, "I spoke to her," and they didn't make. She knew her name, but they didn't make her say it. They made Hawkeye say, "Clint Barn, Yelena," and the way he said it. Obviously, with the music, you understand that Natasha has spoken about Yelena, which begs to ask the question as to why she needed to be the one to sacrifice herself. And because you saw the, the 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 anguish that she was going through, these moments of th these dis the, you know what Thanos had done, she was very emotional about it. I think we have an understanding as to why, because she knew that she got blipped. And she wanted to bring her back. And because of that um, Dracov's daughter situation, she never out she never um, she never moved on from that. She couldn't have moved on. And that's why she did what she did. What were your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? I think I think it speaks to, like I said, it speaks to the intimacy kind of between Clint and Natasha, like as friends that he knew. So he clearly doesn't know what Elena looks like now. She's all grown up. He clearly knew of her. Um, knew, you know, the reason Natasha talked and shared about her family, uh, well, her adopted family, we'll call it, but her adopted family. So, you know, it just shows you the degree to which Clint actually does know her. Um, and that will also lead to, I think it opens the door for like, what does he know about Elena that no one else does? And does that offer a line in to maybe you know, create peace between them? But no, it, it's it's fascinating. But again, it, it's another case of, you know, Renner is, he's like the facilitator of this entire offense in the show, right? He's in these scenes. He's the connective tissue to all these characters. He has history with all these characters. But you know, he's not spending as much time on screen as, as some of them, right? I mean, yeah. and, but he, but if you don't have him, none of this actually works, which is sort of the analogy of what Hawkeye was supposed to be to the Avengers, right? If you go back to Ultron, where his wife says, they, you know, you don't, you're not a god, but they need you. They need you because you're not superpowered, because you're, yeah. you're human, you know? So it's that idea, I think. So we're arriving at the... The meeting the Maya has been waiting for, right? Her, 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 her first encounter. She has pretty much uh, Ronan kind of where she wants him. Where you know she has him right in front of him now. This is a shot. The fight scene was cool. You know the fight scene was actually was pretty cool, right? But I, obviously, is the dialogue what was going to be said? That's what I was waiting for. And he reveals. Um, what many had already been speculating it would be, but not exactly what, um, because most people, given the way Ronan revealed himself, is om they almost made it seem like, and many people were talking, was that really Ronan back then killing off the tracksuit mafia, right? That reveal mo almost made it seem like, who else are we going to see, right? But they just made it a little bit too dramatic for me. But, he reveals who was actually behind her father's death. It, and it was as if she couldn't listen to it, this anymore. And she, she found a way to, to get the upper hand. And right before delivering the, the killing bow, Kate Bishop shows up and saves Hawkeye. What were your thoughts? Uh, in that moment where Hawkeye reveals the truth to her. I think that, I mean, the way that she accepts it, um, like she protests initially, but then kind of seems, it seems to sink in, made me think that she had that suspicion all along, right? Because it's like, well, otherwise, why would you, why would you believe anything that came out of this guy's mouth if he's been this, you know, enemy that you've been hunting for vengeance for years? Why? Why in the span of two or three sentences could he kind of cause you to doubt that? It yeah. makes me believe that she already doubted it deep down. And so when he said it, it kind of like resonated like that. And then immediately she obviously identifies 
in her mind, she's like, oh, it has to be Ozzy because yeah, that. So I thought it was interesting. Fight scene is good. I was trying to remember what's the first time. So now I feel like with the Ronin, Batman, like these type of characters, all of these shows and films do the here are the henchmen, here's the quick cut that makes them disappear. <laughs> And we don't know where the the, the hero is. Like, oh, it was Batman Begins the first time that they did that? Like, yes. who who started that whole who thing? Started that? Everybody does that now. I can't recall. I can't recall. I mean, they do it in pretty much any action movie. Some are more graphic than others, where you you you, you get the hero picking off dudes one by one and stuff. Um, because like, I know, because like Rambo used to do it. They have true the lies. Knife, the knife scene. Yeah, yes. like, but like the, the the wrinkle here is like with Rambo, you would always see you would kind of see he come out of the mud, or whatever like that. You know, in this, like you never see anything. Right? They just like disappear, like predator, basically. Yeah, like about, yeah, you know? yeah, like what? It can't be just him. He already has set some traps or something because <laughs> exactly. they're going too fast in different directions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll I'll point out another thing, but any any other thoughts on um, that revelation to Maya? Uh, no, but as you said, I think it's been something that's been set up over the course of the show and kind of telegraphed, and so we kind of we kind of knew like even in his fit of rage, yeah. Ronan would, would be unlikely to have just sort of mowed them down without some other motive involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was at that moment that he realized, you know. If something's gonna go down, at least you know the truth now. You know what I'm saying? Because um, he warned, like anything happens to my family, then it's Ronan again. <laughs> you know. So the thing that bothered me when Maya uh, looked back and 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 Clint was gone. The time between Kate Bishop finding uh, Hawkeye again, he doesn't have the Ronan gear on. Like he changed quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, it was quick for me. I was like, he didn't have a book bag or nothing. So it was like that was like, yeah. I would have if you would have kept him in the Ronin outfit, fine. But don't straight change him to straight up street clothes right away. Like it was immediate. But um what was the scene after that? Um yeah, I think we, we already mentioned this with Kate um, tells Clint uh, that the, the, the Black Widow came to visit her and she spoke to him. And the way Hawkeye says Yelena gives us all the indication that Natasha has spoken to him previously about her. And I mean, those are intimate moments that we, we don't see, but... It makes us interested in sort of hearing it from Clint, what sort of what he knows and what had really transpired on Vormir. It's going to be crushing. I'm telling you, Brian, I'm calling it. That's going to be a, 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 a very that's going to be the scene for me if they do it right. If they even get to it. Yeah. By the way, the, the, those little moments in this show. So this show has wound up not being like a pure adaptation of the Mass Action run. But with Fraction consulting on the show, I think clearly where you see his influences in moments like that, because the implication, like we said, of Clint knowing who Yelena is when it's never been referenced in movies speaks to this when they're not on a mission. Yeah. What were Black Widow talking about? And it's like they're talking about family. They're talking about personal things. And that, that's just one little nugget that sort of fits into that idea. Like they have this whole friendship that isn't about the next target yeah. or saving the world. It's about two people who have a real connection. Yes. Yeah, man. I think about, I feel bad sometimes thinking back of the, how badly we had Hawkeyes. Like we don't want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 they have like I mean good for them I like to be proven wrong with, th with stuff like yeah, this yeah but you know to that point though the, the, it's exactly what the comic what that run of comics pulled off it took this second tier Avenger and gave him this personality and this color that made people want to read the next issue 
And like the Hawkeye that's been portrayed in the MCU prior to this show is not that interesting. It's not. Yeah. He hasn't been given a lot to do. Yeah, they force fed a family scene into Age of Ultron as sort of like a makeup call for brainwashing him in the first one. But like he's just never been all that yeah. featured. Yeah. And so this show is not the same character, right? It's the same guy or the same actor, but it's not being depicted the same way. Yeah. It, it, it's a stark contrast to Loki's problem. Loki had been given so much to do, right? And my concern about that show was the bar was so high that they were just going to hit the head against it. And that show defied my expectations, but managed to reinvent Tom Hiddleston as like a hero in, yeah, in, in yeah, that yeah. show. Like a, so it's still the same premise of like they, they're finding new ways to like make these familiar characters seem fresh. And that's what's taking these shows that we underestimated and um, and turning them actually into the ones we, we've liked the most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the next scene. We see Yelena doing her due diligence. Like Kate had um, mentioned, you, you need to find out who you're working for. Whatever, whatever. So, Which is key. Yes. Because it tells you that in that conversation, even though Yelena never betrayed a real reaction when Kate brought this up, yeah, it did sink in. She's like, wait a minute. Kate's actually right. I, I kind of glossed over that. I probably should actually back check who you hit. exactly exactly sort of puts a kink in her talents i guess yeah and so she follows her to some building and i don't know if i i don't know if you picked up on this but when she looked up to me explains the photo to well, the me the photos from an elevated position yes. so when she looked up i think she saw her opening Yes, I agree. And I think so. That's where that picture comes from. Who knows if they even show it? But then we back at um, Grill's crib. The first thing you hear is dance. What? Uh. <laughs> Brian, you and I know, I'm, and I'm sure you know, if you can make a dog do a trick, it's because you spent a long time with him. Yep. And if a, a dog, and, and, yeah, and if you see a dog playing with his owner, it, whoever it is, you always that's a that's always a calm moment. And I'm telling you, man. And then listen to this. Look what Kate Bishop says. Grill is cool. <laughs> yeah, can't do it to him, man. That's not right. He can cook. He can do all this. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I always thought that they were gonna kill Captain America. And, and they didn't. They killed Tony off. Cause, but imagine they would have done that to Captain America. You would have. Brian, I don't care who you are. If you're a fan of this genre, you are going to feel it. If, that, if something would have happened to Cap. And Grills is just a guy like, like damn, man. You, you're going to feel it. Not to that extent, but I think you've built up a sort of connection to grills and people that you know that 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 reminds you of him you know what i'm saying so i think that's gonna be i think they're gonna do it maybe they save it for next season but ultimately he is gonna pay the price at some point that's rough i think it's there i mean the difference with cap though the cap's obviously a main character yeah so, yeah yeah i think with grills it's more that the classic the, the innocent bystander with a good heart who gets yeah. caught in the crossfire of yeah something that's way bigger than him and I hope they don't do it, but yes, you're right. It would be true to the, it would be true to the comics if he yeah. does not make it out of the finale. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Kate Kate is setting that up with the grill is cool stuff, and he can do this, and everybody's like going, and grill is just chilling. You know, is that that's gonna be tough? But she receives a text, and is Yelena not saying her name is Yelena, but just calling her Kate Bishop was enough. Kate Bishop. <laughs> David writes Kate Bishop. All <laughs> <Old> day. <laughs> she already knew who it was. <laughs> and the, I think the coolest part for me is not the revelation of the kingpin. We knew that was coming. That was just confirmation. And I'll just say this before I'll, I'll finish this, this thought off. That whoever thought that this was not going to be Vincent D'Onofrio, whoever questioned, who, is like, come on, man. 
This is just too easy. Sometimes. I know everybody was thrown off with Mephisto. But every once in a while, you got to just, you can't play those games. And again, I, I want to say it again. I've said it in other shows. Why would Kevin Feige put himself in a position to answer questions about why he didn't cast Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox? He's not going to do it. Everybody accepts them as Daredevil and Vin and uh, Kingpin. Who else? We don't know. There's definitely some good uh, uh, characters that can return and, and guys that played them. But this was just simple. My The part that I enjoyed was when Clint uh, looked at the... Because he's been talking Kingpin up like crazy, yo. He's like the big guy. I don't want to... I hope he's not the big guy. The big guy. But he's also been keeping it to himself yeah. the whole show, right? Yeah. That's the thing is he knows that that guy is out there. Yeah. He's been hoping <laughs> I can avoid... <laughs> that's that's crazy. Thinking about what he's faced already in Endgame right. and Infinity War, he's scared of this dude? That's huge, yo. That is huge. But when he looks at the, the, the picture, he's like, cool. He just says, that's the guy I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to avoid. Yo, there's, you, he only seen Hawkeye broken in, in, in a couple of moments. Losing his family, losing Natasha. Those are the only times that he's shown in motion. But he's never shown fear. But he's he's he. You can tell by the words that he uses to describe this dude that he doesn't want to deal with is fear. I don't want to mess with this guy. Who knows what? He also showed he, yeah. he showed that vulnerability in the phone call to Laura too, right? Because yeah. she's telling him she's like, "We're all right. We're far away." Blah blah blah. But he's you can tell he's concerned when he yeah. calls. Him. He's like he's like we're getting close to something really bad, and and, and you know who it is, and yeah, so. Um, by the way, I love the the the, the great the grainy photo, but clearly clearly still wearing the tactile bulletproof suit, of <laughs> the white. You just yeah, love this thing. Yeah, yeah. By the way, there was a crazy rumor out there that I did not ascribe any value to, but I'm certainly glad it's not true. Did, did you hear that there was a rumor that the Nafrio was going to be the kingpin, but they were going to CGI the kingpin into like. This huge the dude, comics gigantic version of him, and I was like, if they do that, that's that's very un Marvel. Um, yeah, and so it's I clear mean, from the photo, it's Vincent D'Onofrio yeah, yeah, at the same yeah. portions that he was during the Netflix show. Yeah, it, it would have taken away from what we were accustomed to seeing and, and which we thought was great. That that word goofy would have been thrown around a little bit, possibly. And we don't want to hear that, yo. We don't want to hear no. Goofy. Yeah, we don't need any job of the Hut King nah, memes. Nah, on. nah, nah. So I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad they re they come to the right decisions ultimately, right? Sometimes not, and sometimes it's out of their control, and sometimes they make the right decisions. So, what did you think about the over overall episode? Where do you think? we get into episode six there's a lot to unravel we got jack the card we got eleanor we got yelena and hawkeye right eleanor mk bishop jack the card and what else you know who's he involved with is he connected to the king there's a lot to unravel here can they accomplish that brian in the time they've they given some of these episodes thus far I'm a little skeptical. Um, the safest bet, the safest bet in Marvel Disney Plus has been bet on the second to last episode to be great. Because every one of these shows, the second to last episode has been great. Mm. The other easiest bet has been bet against the finale because you probably, you would pretty much be three for four <laughs> sort of what went against the finale of the great episode. Only Loki really pulled it off. Yeah. Um, I'm skeptical because the the photo indicates D'Onofrio is probably in the episode. Maybe not as much as Kang, but I don't think he's in it for two seconds. Um, what if he's in the uh, the end credit scene? I don't think it works because by showing him with Eleanor, 
I think it will now seem weird to then have a finale where he's not with Ellen. He's not connected directly to Eleanor and just pops up. Yeah. I will be surprised given the amount that Hawkeye has hyped this kind of tells me Hawkeye's got to cross paths with him. Now, what's interesting here is this show does not have a formal season two. And as best we can tell, the audience for this has definitely been weaker than the other Marvel shows. Mm -hmm. But there's so much here that's begging for a season two. Of course. And I'm curious to see if the finale was actually written knowing there would be a season two or if it is, in fact, going going to try to go out like WandaVision. And get it all in because let, let's let's quickly go down the list, right? So Kingpin's mm -hmm. involvement, Echo's resolution, like what does she do? What does she get to the bottom? Black Widow's resolution with Hawkeye, Kate Bishop's ascension, effectively with into kind of into true hero mode, and her resolution with her mom. And I guess I don't know what Jack would promise, but Jack Duquesne needs to pick up a sword and fight. That is, in my mind, that's actually going to happen in the finale. Like, just given he's he's called swordsman in the comics, yeah, we make yeah. it through a whole season of Jack Duquesne where he doesn't, where the, where the only time we see him fight is a fake fencing duel <laughs> with his potential stepdaughter. That's a loss. So we're getting a fight. He's going to pick up a sword. Um, you have the whole like Eleanor Bishop, who's behind her. How does this connect to Contessa? Because you know that's out there, even though they haven't mentioned her by name. Black Widow's mere presence kind of indicates that's part of this. Um, then you have Clint's family, Laura. Like, what is her? Who is Laura? Like, what is she doing there? Is she just? Is she really going to be on a phone line in episode six? After all that, no. So it's been teased. That she's been out of the game a long time. So that's for, let's say the episode is an hour. That'd be the longest we've seen mm -hmm. at one of these finales. Right now, it's so not for 55 minutes to mm -hmm. get that in there and not have it feel like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale, which was mm -hmm. probably the worst that we've gotten. But was the worst in part because they were jamming so much in yeah. to that last hour. Yeah. How worried are you? This show has been great. I mean, the consistency has been excellent. So yeah. How worried are you that they can't land this? I am. Uh, I mean, I think the only thing that puts me at ease because the only thing that makes sense is to uh, obviously extend it a little bit more, for at least fifty-five an hour, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to unravel there, and, and I don't necessarily think that we'll find resolutions to all of them, or, or to any of them. Um, Echo, obviously, we already have a season coming up for her right so her resolution might not end here we just see that i don't i don't know what happens at the end of this act because obviously they're not going to kill the kingpin off right no exactly that would be the literally the worst decision of, of course all time, but that's not of happening. course i no. mean i was i was listening to new rock stars uh rogue theory and there was someone there was talking about you know they can't how is that even a conversation right you can't have that kind of, well, kingpin them killing kingpin is like the dumbest idea is it's just is i am not worried about that happening um we can't forget also if we sort of uncover any thing that happened with eleanor bishop and kate bishop's father if she has something to do with it we don't know you sure he's dead we don't know i think there's a chance he's not so that's why i throw it out there and then who is he then? No, that's why I just it's just yeah. The my my pet theory is that this show knows it has a season two. That's my like that it just hasn't been made public. That they know they're going to do it. The only clue that I point to is Renner, who who seemed very over this character when they first announced this show. Kind of was like pretty open about saying like, oh, this would be a great way to go out and hand out hand off the character. Yeah changed his tune dramatically in the promotional material for this show and basically was like oh yeah i'd, I'd be very open to continuing to play this character and when i heard him do that i was like i don't know, I don't know jeremy renner but he seems kind of like a prickly guy like yeah it just for him to be like i want to keep doing hawkeye for another couple of years made me think that they know there's a season two so that's my like pet theory and with the amount of things we have out there i'm just assuming we kind of don't buy up all these loose ends 
I th yeah, I think if he does do it, it'll be on some Han Solo type of situation. Hey, but this has got to happen. I got to be done. You know, you got to take me out, you know, the way you think is best or we talk about it or whatever, but he has to go but out. He, as I said, if you compare the amount of screen time he has in the show versus the amount of screen time that Hiddleston has in Loki, there's no comparison. Oh, no. Renner worked a lot less. Yes. This was a shorter shoot for him. Yes. So if he... Maybe that's why he likes it now. He's able to play the character he wants to play. He doesn't need a crazy haircut. And he basically can kind of just be part-time. Yeah. But the show is named after him. So he gets paid like he's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, good deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a question for you. This show has not had an after credits scene. Do we assume there is one after this, after this I, episode? If so, who do you think it's featured? Who do you think is featured? I have a guess. I'm still, I, f I still feel like the possibility is, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to really take into consideration that we've, Maya's, I mean, maybe it's, it's possible that Maya still has to deal with Cass. Perhaps that takes up a lot of the episode because that's the person that's closest to her at that moment, you know, you know, since her father passed, that's it. So maybe this episode ends with her doing him in. I still feel that the kingpin is the the end credit scene. Okay. So the kingpin's definitely a possibility for this. I think he was going to be in the episode personally, but definitely a possibility mm -hmm. that even if he is in the episode, he is also a feature part of an end credit stinger. What are you th I think Echo is definitely a possibility. We know she's getting her own show. They could do like a launch point, a launch pad moment for her her own you know show in that. Uh, my dark horse candidate is Charlie Cox. Okay. Uh, this finale will air the week after No Way Home hits the theaters. You know, given the rumors that were out there, and I know the answer to those rumors, but just given the rumors that are out there, okay. um, and given the fact that we know, I think there's a little bit of. It would be kind of fitting if you introduced D'Onofrio in the series and then at the very end had Charlie Cox kind of in the same world in Manhattan and an acknowledgement of that. Yeah. And potentially a character who in a, se you know, in a season two, would you have Charlie Cox almost as a supporting character before you know Daredevil becomes his own show, which we know inevitably will happen? Yeah. Wouldn't rule it out. I think that's my Dark Horse candidate. It, not, not not as Daredevil, but as Matt Murdock sighting. In, 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 in. I don't know. I mean, you and I have been. Yeah. I mean, another possibility for me. I think Daredevil is a possibility, but I think Daredevil most likely will get his end credit scene. I mean, you saw the movie. Yeah. Um, you, you probably saw Matt Murdock, but not Daredevil. Um, I think we get a sighting of Daredevil at the end of She-Hulk. By the way, I can hear our episode playing in the background. Can you hear that? Oh, you can? Oh, hold on a second. Brian, this, um... Hawkeye is, is far exceeded my expectations. No question. And... You sh we certainly ended off with a bang. Um, I will confirm that. I mean, I, I trust your judgment. Um, we, we like sort of the same type of films. Uh, by the way, there's a Netflix documentary where it talks about individuals who talk about movies that they've seen that sort of changed their perspective, I guess, on, on film and society or whatever. This is one episode where I, I forget. I have to look it up. I'll send it to you um, where he talks about 48 hours. Very, very, very dope. Very dope. And another one about disco and Saturday Night Fever and the whole John Travolta situation. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, Hawkeye. If you haven't, this is a very bingeable show. Yes. It's an easy watch. Yes. Very if you're one of those guys that want to binge, you can wait and watch and it all the way through, and you're going you're gonna to run right through it. This is a perfect. Uh, speaking of binging, The Witcher starts tomorrow, tonight, actually. I'm yeah. not going to watch it tonight because my wife is going to probably be upset if I do. 
But I'm going to definitely watch it tomorrow. Hopefully, she's down with it because I know she has to get some work done. And I'd be delaying her because I'd be pulling into it through these shows. But, Brian, any, any last words on your thought on the whole Hawkeye series? Um, this is certainly has me more excited for the future of the MCU. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think if we're taking an honest look at the year in Disney+, Plus. Loki is the only show that we know has a second season and always had a second season. Uh, I, th- I still think, as of now, stands as the best show. Now, we haven't seen the Hawkeye finale, but the Loki finale puts it over, over the top. Yeah. This Hawkeye show is definitely in the number two position for me right okay. now. And if we get a good finale, it will be the number two show that we've had this year. And the, and the show that I would most want to see get another season of yeah. the shows that we've had. Um, and then I think we've had, you know, uneven results, like some very high highs in both Winter Soldier, actually in all of them, in, in Winter Soldier, What If, and um, WandaVision. The highs are excellent. Yeah. But all of those shows had lows that you just, you want to see improvement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Hawkeye and Loki were the two where, like, at its worst moments, the show is very enjoyable. Um, and at its best moments, it's just, you know, practical. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I, I never thought I would say at the end of, season the hawkeye series that i want more hawkeye and more kate bishop and more of these characters but you know they 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 have knocked it out of the park with their casting and um and the tone and the storytelling so um, yeah really hopeful we could um, is that, incidentally this is not totally related but i, I do want to throw this in there because i don't know what else we were talking about they were talking about charlie cox and, and daredevil ben affleck's been making promotional rounds for his new movie obviously got himself in some hot water on a on Howard Stern the other day, mm-hmm. but he he's been he he was on the the Bill Simmons podcast and they had a long conversation about Batman, mm-hmm. and he took the conversation to Daredevil, which I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And he said he admitted his Daredevil experience and the output of Daredevil was a huge motivation why he took the Batman. Basically, he gave you two reasons. He said it was that and the fact that he wanted to do a movie that his kids really wanted him to do. Usually doesn't end well, I would say, in Hollywood when that happens, but that was what he said. But he said something that I didn't know or didn't remember. So he said on Daredevil, he said the biggest regret, and he was kind of joking, but not. He was like, the biggest regret is that he's like, I knew as we were making it, it was basically going to be bad. He's like, I knew this wasn't going to work. And he's like, he's like, the shame of it, he goes, the shame of it is the third producer on the movie was a young man named Kevin Feige. Wow. And he said, if only I had known to ask that young guy, don't give what the rest of these people say, you tell me what we should be doing with this character, maybe the world would be a lot different. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, I did not know or remember that Kevin Feige was associated with that movie. I think I remember seeing that. I think I remember seeing it, but it was like, you know, something you f- I just forgot about, but yeah. And he was a part of the X-Men too, right? Yeah, some of the bad X-Men, right? That, like, yeah. Bad Fox I, mean, I wonder yeah. if he was in that position too where his thought, his his voice wasn't really heard. And now look at him. Stud. <laughs> and so, so then Affleck made an interesting comment where he said, because now he, even though they, he hasn't worked with Feige in the MCU, he knows, he said he knows him and he kind of was like, He's never met a producer who had a better sense of what the audience wants to consume with regard to the little things. He's like, mm. the, the tone, the character, the costume, the weapons, the structure, the set pieces. He's like, this guy's hit rate for like what audiences want. He's like, I've never seen anything like that. Genius, right? Like, that's basically oh, yeah. what he's I mean, he's, he's certainly up there to me, in my opinion as one of the most iconic individuals of this era in filmmaking he's created something again i you know i always thought of if someone could do this and and he's doing it and he's just hitting you know he's not listen michael jordan didn't hit every shot he, he tried he missed a few times game winners and Kevin Feige, he's missed a few times as well. And he, he, he'll probably admit it, you know, in, in, in close conversations with his most trusted, with the parliament maybe, you know. Um, and, you know, he's going to always try to 
do great. It's gonna be the. It's gonna be interesting the day that he passes the baton to someone else. I think we're gonna be like, damn man, is this the end? You know. But um, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Hawkeye. Um, what didn't you enjoy? What haven't you enjoyed? What are you looking forward to the most for the next episode? Uh, and the see and the season finale. Hopefully, we get more. And what do you? Who do you guys think is going to show up at those end credit scenes? Because we're definitely getting an end credit scene. Um, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Generation.